Yeah, I hope I'm speaking loud enough. I'm uh, Alexandre, and here is Elise. We're uh, both uh, principals at uh, Desonissima. These are surnames. <laughs> and uh, it's a small boutique agency in Montreal. I always wanted to say boutique <laughs> with, with, uh, with an English accent. And uh, we're the only two employees right now, but that's bound to grow because uh, we're going to all the work camps we can go to, and business will be booming soon. <laughs> Uh, we're here to talk about multilingual uh, websites uh, made with WordPress, and we wanted to start with a little show of hands. I assume every one of you speaks at least one language. Uh, who speaks more than one language here? Okay, cool. More than two languages? Okay, so I guess you have a, a, an interest in the subject, uh, which is why you're here. Uh, this is, in case you get confused, Oops. This is a <laughs> technical problem. If you click on this, we Okay. Oh. <laughs> this is uh, us. Elisa and I, in case you confuse us. <laughs> and, uh, uh, this was taken at WordCamp Montreal this summer. Uh, we've been speaking at WordCamp Montreal since pretty much the beginning. Uh, each year at Montreal, uh, WordCamp Montreal, there is a talk about multilingual websites. Last summer in 2013, we organized and participated in a debate about the best, the best solutions to run a multilingual website. Uh, there was no clear winner on, of the debate, but you'll hear about everything we talked about today. And um, as you can hear, I'm cold. I come from the cold and I so also have a cold. Um, but um, beside being uh, in love with WordPress, we're also both writers. <coughs> so Alex is also sick <laughs> and um, he has written a graphic novel called Yves le Roi de la Cruz. I think I can translate that by something like uh, Yves the King of Seduction or something. Yeah, I, I like to say King of the Pickup Artist. It's a, oh. it's a sarcastic <laughs> title, obviously. And we're not talking about you, we're talking about Eve there. Yeah. And uh, I've also written two books that are not funny at all uh, about uh, food ethics. And I have like many, many talks about that, so we can go to the happiness bar to discuss uh, food ethics after, if you want to. But uh, let's move to uh, the real subject. Um, we are here to talk about uh, WordPress and multilingual content. And 2014 was a pretty important year for WordPress. For the first time in history, uh, English downloads of WordPress passed the uh, non-English downloads of WordPress passed the uh, English downloads. And uh, as WordPress will continue democratizing publishing, I guess download stats will start looking like that. Um, so uh, the English ball is pretty small compared to Mandarin, Hindi, Spanish, Arabic, Portuguese, and all those languages and French is <laughs> in pink. Uh, WordPress is more and more accessible to non-English speakers. As you may have realized, um, when you can now install WordPress uh, pretty easily um, in non-English languages, for, um, WordPress 4.0 includes a language chooser, looking like that. After selecting the language, uh, WordPress will download and install the language back on the fly, and then uh, the process will be in that language. That's amazing, that's really fun, that saves us like uh, five minutes on each install. Uh, problem is that uh, if you click on this link, our uh, slides are uh, on our Twitter account, it's the Wikipedia page for uh, multilingual countries, it is huge. Uh, many countries like Belgium, Canada, Switzerland are officially multilingual, um, but they have also many monolingual in their population. For instance, my mom uh, in Quebec, Canada doesn't speak English at all. Um, and some countries, like monolingual countries such as France, well, they have sizable multilingual population speaking other languages such as Arabic and even here in the States well you have Spanish you even have a little bit of French uh, in Maine in Louisiana if you go in Alaska you have like something like 20 Alaska native languages so multilingual is is a big issue and it's 
a bigger issue uh, if you work with WordPress. Uh, the first line of the codex makes it clear WordPress does not support a bilingual or multilingual blog out of the, out of the box. Whoops. What do we do? Well, we are going to try to answer that, um, but we are not the only one worried about this problem. Uh, Stefan Doris, who is a core developer for WordPress, and he's also from Montreal, recently made this comment on, um, I think it was on the WordPress Polyglot forum, right? Yes. It's on the Make WordPress Polyglot, that's a group for uh, tr translating WordPress. So what he says, uh, the requirements most of those entities are bound to, such as linguistic rights, mean that they essentially cannot use WordPress core as a publishing platform or must or most as their way act their way. <coughs> that's cold and accent mixed together, <coughs> that's uh, something, another language, into doing do so. They be it's through using multiple instances, multi-sites, plugins, which are currently often far from ideal. So we'll come back to those solutions that are far from um, ideal, but first I want to talk about multilingualism as a matter of accessibility and to go through f a few good and bad pra practice practices with you. Uh, if we look at uh, the like definition of uh, what um, an accessible website should be, um, it should remove the barriers that prevent access to some people or group of people. Um, we all often, most of the time, think about people that suffer from handicap, and of course, speaking Japanese is not a handicap, uh, but I really think that we should see that as a matter of accessibility. Um, building a good website in a correct language accessible to the people speaking that language is a matter of accessibility. So a few good advice. Well, if there is one advice you should remember and you will walk away with is no automated translation ever, 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 ever. Um, the, 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 the quotation there is from Google himself uh, saying at the end that you should ask yourself whether you really want to present this kind of content to them if you're not willing to translate it, translate it properly. Um, I can Google Translate myself if I'm in a site that is not in a language I can read or speak. So um, if I really need it, I can do it. But you as a web developer, designer, website owner, don't do that. Either you translate it professionally or you don't do it. Simple. Uh, flags are not languages. So don't use flags as language switchers. A single language is spoken in many countries. For instance, I speak French. I'm not French. I hate French. So I don't want to click on the little French flag. And a single country may have multiple languages. Your visitors are not flag spotters. And even think about Chinese. There is two types of Chinese characters, uh, the simplified in China, uh, the traditional in Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong. So what flag should we use there? Should peop would people from Singapore somehow think they should like click on the Taiwan flag? No, it just doesn't work. Use the language names and use the language names uh, in, uh, in that language. So instead of English, Spanish, German, like we see pretty often, uh, offer English, Espanol, and... Deutsch. <laughs> <laughs> Designated German <laughs> So no flags ever. I know design are like that because it, it's small and it's an icon, but it's bad, so don't do it. If you want to use an icon, use a neutral one. For instance, this one um, won a design award last year. It shows that translation is something available there. Or use a globe, for instance. Uh, Apple uses globe for um, multilingual. I'm sure designer can find ways that are better than um, showing um, flags. Uh, this is some things we don't often have clients ask, uh, asking us for, but um, 
data to be taken into account. Um, this example there is taken from the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs. On the left, you've got Persian, on the right, English. And as you can see, um, both sides are switched because you read Persian from right to left and English from left to right. So, um, if you buy a cheap team on uh, Team Forest, you will probably not be able to switch those um, sidebar and uh, menus and all of that. But that is very useful for uh, the readers that read on the other direction. Another point I wanted to show is that the content is not exactly the same on both websites. And it's something you often want to do when um, you build multilingual websites. Uh, adapt your content to um, the, the readers. So here, I'm not even sure it's the same guy in the slider, but maybe. But uh, at least you have like three, three elements there in the carousel and only two there, and there's other uh, slight difference there. So often when we do a multilingual websites, it's not exactly the same content in all languages, and it's normal. Another advice is um, to adjust your font size to the language. So on top you have English size 18, and then Arabic same size. I don't think that uh, people that read Arabic have better eyes than English speakers. Um, so put Arabic a bit better. And on the bottom line is Japanese, who looks a bit too big, a bit too big. So you also need to adjust your font size if you're using different characters. <clears throat> don't mix and match languages in si inside a single URL. Uh, if you are um, writing a blog post in English, but you want to uh, have a quotation in, in French, well, use the, blog, the lang equals fr in blog code to um, tell first Google that this is French content, and those who read French will find my joke pretty funny. <laughs> Too much. I think we're the, the only one understanding French. Yeah, it's written, this is a boring presentation. Um, and, uh, and also uh, for uh, blind people that are using um, tools to help them reading content, uh, the, the voice will adapt the, the reading to the language. Um, Cross-linking uh, is a nice to have. Uh, honestly, we, uh, we have never seen anybody using cross-linking. Cross-linking is... Yeah, cross-linking is... Uh, cr explain it. <laughs> well, cross-linking is uh, having each individual content piece in the website linked to its equivalent in other languages. And so so if, for, if, for instance, you're selling shoes and those blue Nike in French, you have like the bottom to, to switch to English and you will arrive to the same shoes in the English website. Um, Google says it's a good practice, but... Well, the use case for that also sounds weird to us, meaning you would arrive at the, the Nike shoes in another language than your own which seems weird because you would probably search in your own language and, and then you realize that you're at the right product but in the wrong language, so you want to switch language but stay at the same place. But Google says it's a good thing, so if Google says it, it is. Um, this is what happens when translators translate without context. Uh, this is the actual United website right now. Um, in English, it's perfect. Well, it, doesn't look good, but it's technically perfect. You have flight, hotel, car, and vacation. In French, uh, you have vol, flight, it's good. Uh, hotel, it's hidden. Uh, car, same thing. And by vacation, they've been lucky there. And then the layout here is all, is all, is all broken. So translators need to know where their translation will end up. Um, séjour à l'hôtel could have been simply hotel in French too and would have fit there, but the translator wanted to make it nice and didn't work out. Uh, 
your turn. Yes, uh, we're going to try to make uh, to, to make this with WordPress now. Um, so the first thing we want to do is to translate our content, obviously. <laughs> so that seems easy enough. Uh, this is a blog post from Elise's blog, and uh, the content is uh, this this here, a title, and uh, what's in the, the little the, the little content. So you th you think, well, I just need like a, to be able to enter this in another language somewhere in my admin, and I'm done with it. Except it's a little bit more complex than that because, as you know, blog posts are categorized, they're tagged, and all of this is language dependent. Um, you can also think about your uh, custom menus, which uh, have language, I have translated content in them. Uh, you can think about your widgets, where text widgets are actually free text, which you want to have translated from, uh, from one language to another when you run a multilingual site. You also have your uh, uh, widget titles that you'll have for all your widgets or all your, the widgets you input some and this needs to be translated too. Uh, another thing we often forget is uh, the URL themselves. Uh, here you've got the permalink setting for uh, WordPress install that has WooCommerce on it and WooCommerce needs a ton of uh, custom URLs and now they're all in French, Boutique, Produit, stuff like that. And obviously, if my shop is also in English, I'd like to have my URL say shop, product, and uh, add my categories, uh, my, my slugs in English instead of French. So that's one more thing we need to translate. Uh, we also have some uh, things in the uh, settings that we need to translate. The, the date formats are not the same in any language. So you need to be able to specify different date formats for different languages. Uh, and uh, one that we often forget is uh, the title of the site and its description. We often forget forgotten just another WordPress site. Uh, obviously, you probably have changed that by now, but uh, you want this to be in the in the language that uh, your uh, visitor is is using. And uh, that makes uh, that makes that makes me think that uh, sometimes we don't actually use a site title. We prefer to use. Uh, a custom header image and oftentimes there will be text inside that custom header image so you want to be able to have a different image depending on the language and th this brings me to the images altogether where sometimes you'll have images that have text in them so you want to be able to have these images uh, translated and pick the right image depending on which language you're looking at the content so uh, but there are some images that, that do not have text in them, so you can use them on all languages. So you, you need to uh, be able to do so. That, as you see, it's pretty simple running a multilingual <laughs> website. It's easier <laughs> to learn English, and then <laughs> there is re there's really not much to it. Uh, and actually, we're just getting started because I've I've uh, I've glossed over this uh, box here, the custom fields. Uh, which is up, usually hidden and you don't see it, but there's always a ton of stuff in there. And uh, depending on the plugins you have installed on your web WordPress site, this can be like tens or tw 20, uh, 30 uh, fields with some content in there. Some may need to be translated. Some may need to be copied between translation or kept synchronized. I've given, I've made just, just a little example. That's uh, all the custom fields that are hidden for uh, WooCommerce products. So. Uh, you'll need to be able to play, make decisions about all these custom fields uh, for each translation. Uh, some people have attacked this problem, so you don't have to solve all of this uh, by yourself. There are three main uh, conceptual approaches to the problem of multilingual in WordPress. The first one is uh, each post has multiple languages. So uh, now I'm, I get to show off my supreme drawing skills. <laughs> Uh, so the big circle is a website, and inside the site you have posts, and it's inside each post you have the translation of the post. So, uh, it, say, say this is a bilingual website, so you have the English and French content. The, uh, there's a plugin for that, it's, uh, it's called Qtranslate, but it's been abandoned for about a year. Uh, there's someone else that uh, German people have taken over. They, they've made a fork that's called MQ Translate, and it's maintained and it keeps working with WordPress updates. 
It's one of the original solutions to uh, to uh, having WordPress in multiple language. Is that only for two languages or multiple? No, multiple. Uh, multiple. Yeah. Uh, everything I talk about is for multiple languages. There's there's no limit to the number of languages you can. Uh, and they're not automatically translated. No, there's no like, there's no automatic translation. You you have to enter the translation yourself or get translators to. Remember my first advice: <laughs> no effort. <laughs> no, what these th these plugins do? They take care of all the problems I've just shown you with the, the mountain of screenshots. But you still need a translator. Yes. Human. <laughs> So, uh, no, the back end is translated when you install WordPress. This is to translate the content. So here, here you have, you've got your post editing screen uh, in MQ Translate. And as you can see, you've got more, uh, more tabs here. You have the tabs for three languages. You've got a title field that has tripled. And if you have more languages, it will keep growing. And then you'll have more tabs. And they will be very ugly ones. But maybe once you... <laughs> yes? If you're doing your French... And English website like you're talking about here, when you do your install, which language do you choose? It doesn't matter. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. Once you install one of these things, they'll download the language packs and you'll be able to use the, the, the website in both languages. Does the administrative interface always be in one language? Uh, you can install, there's a, there are plugins where you can choose your administrative language. Uh, per user instead of per site. So you can have the administrative interface always in the same language for you and manage content in multiple languages. Yeah. yeah. So this fits into the content issue, but uh, you pointed out uh, the thing about you know, the CSS with the type yeah, of the, the CSS, that's your team that's going to take care of this. You need to have... Do, do they have a plugin so that you can have a CSS for a uh, Hmm. I, I think that they do, but it's a good question. Uh, but keep on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I will. I'll do. I, I would do a multi site for. Yeah, the, we have other solutions that would take care of this problem. So I'll keep going on my solution. <laughs> But that's not your solution anyways. Uh, so this is the post list where you have another, a new column that's called languages, where you, you have the language it would, it would, with, for which each post is available in. Uh, this is a category where you get the same thing as the post title, you get the multiple uh, multi, uh, replication of the domain. But you see that the description here is not replicated. So you wonder, how can I translate the description? doesn't seem like I have three, uh, three fields to, to input the three languages. Uh, it, when the, 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 this is not done, you need to use one of those really beautiful codes there that uh, you have to know about. Uh, so this is where Qtranslate starts to uh, break apart, if you want my opinion, which is that it, it's not complete and you need to use codes that are really not user-friendly. Uh, Second approach is to uh, have each post have a single language and, uh, and the, the, the post inside the same site, each have a language, so that the both languages live, live inside a single site, but uh, each post is identified with, uh, with the language. So uh, this is a pretty popular approach. Uh, I've got three plugins that use that. Uh, WPML is the... Uh, the automatic recommendation when you know, when people ask about uh, having multilingual uh, content, it's uh, not our favorite. We can explain later why. Uh, well, yeah, it's not free, it's commercial, but that's not its biggest issue. Uh, Polylong is, uh, works similarly to WPML, it's more recent, so it's been, uh, it benefits from the fact that it's more recent, so it's lighter weight and, uh, and closer to a WordPress concepts. And Babel is, uh, rec has recently garnered a lot of attention because uh, the makers of Babel, a code for the people, have been acquired by Automatic. Automatic being the parent company of everything. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's assumed that Babel will have a, a role to play in the future of uh, a multilingual in core WordPress. I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, what it looks like. Uh, most of these screenshots are from Polylong. As you can see, it's a, it's a regular uh, posted screen, except I've got uh, on the top right here the new block. 
uh, where that, uh, I indicate which language this post is in, and I can link it to its translation in other languages. With a flag. Yeah, they all, they all use flags. Because, you know, it's so much shorter. You, you see the flags here also in the post list, and uh, you, you get three different icons to say this is in this language, this is, there is translation, there is none, stuff like that. Uh, uh, categories, uh, it's a, a bit the same. You can choose a language and indicate where, where are the translations. Um, so, so you use that one box, pick English, write them all in English, pick yep. French, write them all in French. Yep. Yep. Yeah, or you can, uh, when you're inside here, you can, if there's no translation already uh, assigned to it, you might have a link, create a translation, and the link will be made in automatically when you create a translation. Uh, this is one of uh, the, the widget problem. They solve it by adding in a filter here, which allows you to display widget only in one language or in all languages. And that's really cool. Yeah, that, yeah. that works really well. And they have uh, rudimentary string translations where you can uh, translate widget titles, for example, or date format or site title, the, the little bits and pieces that need to be translated. You can do it over there. Uh, and this is what they do for menus. They duplicate each menu location uh, for each language. So you get, you get mul mul multiplication of menu location. So you create, a uh, you create your menu once for each language and assign it to the right menu location. And, uh, and, and the same menu can go on two locations. So yeah. your social menu can go on. You don't have to replicate it. So it's the, and it uses like the basic WordPress way of doing things. So if you know how to make a menu and assign it to a menu location, it's not much different. Uh, the third option is to consider that a language, a single language is a single site, meaning that you have a WordPress site that has posts in it and everything a WordPress site has, and this site is a single language, and you have another site for another language, and you have as many sites as, as you have languages. There are two ways to do this. You can do it with uh, separate several installations, I think multiple WordPresses, uh, that quickly becomes a maintenance headache. So most people will do it uh, by using multi-site. Multi-site is a bit more complex to set up, but not that much, and you gain so much further down the road in, the, in maintenance time and easiness. Uh, you, you can run a multilingual website with, with strictly multi-site, and you'll, uh, you'll be using only uh, built-in WordPress functionality. So you'll be future-proof and everything will be fine. The only thing that will be missing is cross-linking translations, which is the part where we were not so sure you need it. If you need it, uh, there are two popular plugins that allow you to cross-link translations between uh, sites in a multilingual uh, installation. Uh, the first one is free. The second one is uh, freemium. There's a pro version. I don't have a screenshot for this solution because it, it, it looks exactly like a WordPress installation. If you have plugins, it looks, you, it looks like uh, what I've shown you. You have a little box to choose a language and link translations together. If you are on WordPress.com, your only solution would be to build another website and to do a link with the menu or widget between the two sites. Yeah. And that works. Uh, Cross-link translation, which I was getting to. Uh, as we talked about, you, you may ask yourself, do you need uh, to cross-link translations? If you don't, you, so you solve the problem easily. Uh, then other questions are, how do, how do you handle the language negotiation on the home page? Someone who arrives at your home page without any, just a slash, the home, home page, and you have a site in multiple language, where, which language do you show that person? There are different approaches. One is to have a de default language and redirect everybody to that language. Otherwise, you can uh, use the preferences set in the browser. Uh, some, some are, the, both are defendable. Uh, There's a really a debate because, for instance, I could uh, use an English browser just because it's simpler, but I still want to arrive to the French website. So I don't like those redirect, but it might be simpler for other users uh, in some countries. And you have to use like the country official language as the first language. So it's, there's no like general rule that and you... And there's the, the lazy way, which is to have just a, a, a splash page on your own page, where, which says choose your language. I but don't like that, that. That's probably the worst option. Yeah. Uh, then uh, the language switcher itself, which is the, the thing that outputs the links, what does it do? 
uh, if there is no translation for the, the specific piece of content you're looking at, uh, you have different behaviors. Some will uh, li will, sh will ship you to the own page, and there's a bit of leeway and uh, uh, and uncertainty in this domain. So. Uh, this is most of the language switchers will, will show up as widgets. This is the widget from uh, MQ Translate to show uh, to show a language switcher. The output is something like that. And just to annoy Elise, I I, I had uh, the flag show up. <laughs> yeah, but as you can see, it's it's an option. You could have only text. Uh, this is the language switcher from Polylang. Looks pretty similar. This is the language switcher from Babel. Uh, looks. Fairly similar, they, uh, they, sh they tell you what they're, they're going to do if there is no translation available, which is there's not going to be a link to, uh, you can show the, the language anyway, but it's not going to be clickable, or you can decide to hide the language. As, as you can see, they all look pretty much the same, except when you get to WPML, this is their uh, language selector widget, <laughs> which has no options whatsoever. And uh, you, you, you think that they must be kidding me? Of, cor no. of course they are, because they have a whole option page for <laughs> their language switcher, and I'm not even sh showing it completely there. There, there are more options uh, <laughs> under there. So, uh, it, so they, it's, it pretty much uh, sums up what WPML is, is that it wants to replace everything WordPress does with its own stuff. Uh, there is a thing in there that's interesting, and it is display the language switcher in the WP menu, because that's another uh, avenue that's cool for uh, showing the list of languages. It's having it show up in uh, WordPress menus, and uh, uh, WPML actually uh, allows it. I've never used it myself, but I'm assuming it works. And I know that uh, Long has the option too. That's uh, a menu with uh, the la language switcher from Long. And this will output uh, one link for each language in a uh, WordPress custom menu. So it, instead of adding your languages inside a widget, you'll add them in your main or secondary menu or anything like that. So you can put that in your menu locations. Uh, that's, this is my last step to uh, translating a website. And it's the one where there's a least, uh, least interesting solution, let's say. Uh, if you run a website in multiple languages, you'll probably end up having multiple people working on it. You'll have editors, translators, writers. So you'll end up needing an editorial process. People who write, people who correct, people who approve. And WordPress, by default, does not really support that type of process very well. Uh, you can look at Edit Flow, which is the reference solution for editorial process. It's not translation specific, but it could help. Uh, in the solution I've talked about, WPML and Babel uh, offer some type of support for a uh, workflow. Uh, here's WPML's uh, translation management dashboard. Uh, it has a lot of stuff in it, and uh, basically it's a pointer to stuff that needs to be translated everywhere inside WordPress. And uh, it takes, uh, it, it uh, watches uh, content as it's modified to notify you that you need to uh, to apply updates to the translation to and stuff like that. It's, uh, it can be very useful, but I've never seen anybody use it in the wild. In the wild. Uh, Why is that? Uh, big, because it's a heavy tool. It's a, it's, it brings with it a heavy process. And uh, WordPress sites are mostly small to medium in size, and they're managed more informally. So. Uh, any process can be just communication. You don't necessarily need a software tool. Uh, but WPML offers it. It's an optional module of WPML. Uh, I think that's <coughs> changed so over time as WordPress becomes larger, like more enterprises start using yep. it. I think this yeah. management. Yeah, uh, well, Babel, the one that's been bought by uh, Automatic, is, uh, is all about the um, translation management process. Uh, it's 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 kind of end holding you to the translation process. Uh, in each uh, post, you have this little box ready for translation. So you mark uh, your post as ready for translation. Then it shows up in a special section of the website that is translation jobs. And uh, uh, when you get inside the translation jobs, you get this nice uh, side by side view 
with the original content on the right and, uh, and the translation you have to do on the left. And you'll see the categories are there, it's a bit longer, so you have also, uh, pretty much you need to translate will show up in there. The problem with Babel is that uh, it does really well at this part, the workflow, but it's a bit weird because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't display the other languages in the administration. You can't create a post, suppose your main uh, language is English, and you can't create a post in French. You have to create a post in English and submit it for translation. So it, that's, that's kind of a big limitation, I think, because it prohibits the, the, it prohibits having a site that is different in uh, one language from another. So that screenshot right there is, it's not a side-by-side -side screenshot, that is the post. Yeah, that, that's it's the actual, uh, that's what you get in your browser yeah. window. Uh, inside Babel when you are when you're in a translation job. Uh, that how does it affect with like uh, meta tags or meta uh, values? You mean the uh, custom fields post meta? Yeah. I think they show up way yeah. down the <laughs> in the But you would you would choose your your beta for each language. So it's gonna show the plug in, the S E O Yoast plug in. Yeah down uh, at the bottom yeah. in both languages show the English language what you put in and you still have to yeah. Use yeah. But uh, you probably you won't get the actual interface from uh, the SEO plugin. You'll get just uh, the, the, the name of the fields that may not be that clear for uh, for you since you're used to having the the old interface. Uh, I'll just pull up the last slide because that was it for uh, uh, for uh, our talk. But we have about ten, 10 minutes, minutes left for questions. So uh, go ahead. In front. Well, one thing is with all these plugins, they look like they're massive too, right? What kind of speed overhead do these create as far as you know load times? Because that's a big thing now with Google as well as you know, how fast things load. I can see you make a big drain on speed. Uh, I'd say WPML is really the worst at that. Uh, it adds about 30 tables to your WordPress installation, and it, it can add it can add as many as 100 or 120 uh, database queries on a page load. Uh, but I've seen people say, well, nothing that a little caching can't fix. <laughs> uh, because it's assumed that if you run a medium traffic uh, WordPress site, it will be cached, so it doesn't matter. But uh, uh, Babel, on the other end, has been designed for speed. So it's a completely different design. Uh, I don't think, I don't personally think it's a good design, but that's a really long explanation. And uh, Polylog is fairly quick, doesn't, doesn't add that many... Uh, that many queries and multi-site would be and the multi-site is just like it's it's just running a, a regular uh, WordPress site, so there's no real impact. We had a question in the back, and then you in the front. Yes. What's your favorite? We used to do. Uh, we used to recommend multi-site in uh, 2013 when we had the debate. We were we were team multi-site, and uh, we, I think we won. Uh, yeah, <laughs> judging by the applause, we won, but it was a close call. Uh, Right now, we use Polylong a lot more than uh, because it, it 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 we don't have to install a multi-site each time we we want to make a, a multilingual website. And, but that still depends on the, on the client, on the team. Uh, I had to work with like really shitty teams, and they just don't work well with with Polylong. So multi-site makes it simpler. On the other end, um, when it's uh, for a small site that the client uh, will enter herself or himself, just a blog and stuff like that, Polylong seems uh, a little bit easier to manage for, for clients. For instance, your images are only at one place and all of that. So that really depends on, on the cases, but we're really Polylong or multi-site uh, for depending and, uh, on the project. Another, uh, another reason we use Polylong is uh, we use a uh, manage uh, WordPress hosting and uh, it's much more expensive to run a multi-site than a single site in this type of environment. So for small sites, it, we can't, we're kind of stuck with a single uh, a single site, so that's how we do it. In the front, yes? Same question. Oh. <laughs> we can answer again but if you want to. <laughs> as you can see, there's, the, the conclusion is that there's nothing that solves the problem completely and there probably will never be because it's too big of a problem especially uh, because WordPress is so extensible. So if you add, if you add a lot of plugins, they have their own data that they, they store, hopefully in the WordPress tables, but sometimes somewhere else completely. 
And the more you add stuff, the more you, the job of translating a website gets complex. Yes, in the front. Um, I know, uh, okay, I, I get what you say about uh, never using the um, automatic translator for creating the content. What about offering like the Google Translate little um, pull-down menu widget um, that you can add to some websites? Or is that is that generally not advised? Um, for what I've for for what I feel, it's insulting um, because you think it's going to be a real translation and it's not. Um, most users now know how to use uh, Google Translate automatically in their Chrome uh, browser. So, yeah, I feel the offering the Google Translate is insulting because you expect something better than the Google Translate. Yeah. So it's yeah. yeah it's and, and, and as a French speaker, I'm I'm pretty sensitive to the to the quality of French, and uh, I feel it right now. If it's Google, and it's okay, just let me read it in English or whatever. But um, it yep. for testing the yeah, testing layout. Though. Like if you just want to test it, Abs yeah. to see what it looks like, you can run it through. You know, and, and I mean, I've I've used. I, I had to work on a, on a website that was a Vietnamese, English, and French, and I used Google Translate to understand what I was doing. So yeah, Google Translate is great, you but know what you're getting into yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, that was an interesting case because I received the professional translation in Vietnamese in Word, very well done. But then I had to do a, sli a slider where I had to cut my sentence in Vietnamese, but where do I cut? So, I so didn't know. That, that's the problem of what? translating without context. Yeah. You had a question in the front? Uh, yeah, site search, right? So someone searches for yeah. something. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess you're going to search in their language, but with the different models that you showed, what's showing up? And, you have any issues with uh, well, in, uh, in multi-site, it's not a it's not an issue at all because uh, the content is completely separate. Uh, if you use a plugin um, to translate as a as a I I don't read to translate is the solution I recommend the least. And uh, but it's probably the the toughest to uh, to handle because all the content <coughs> is inside the same post. Right. Whereas uh, both WPM the, the other uh, one that one language proposed, what they do is they always filter the queries to only pull up the things in the right language. So it, it works for the search to... So if you were to do a search for something that was in the body content, uh, in French, for example, and um, but would it show the title in French as well mm -hmm. like on the post? Or mm -hmm. it no well, it, it wouldn't word. show up if you're, in the, if you're browsing the site in English. Right. It would show up only if you're in French, and it would show up only the French content. The way they work is that they let you input content in whatever language it is, and on the on the front end, they filter everything you see. Well, not in the browser, but before it gets to the browser, they filter every query so that you only get the content in the language you're looking at. But I had cases where uh, the blog was multilingual. The client want he, he has employees writing in different languages, and there isn't like no real like. The best way would maybe be to uh, do a multi-site with a third site for the blog and this site, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, there was a question. Uh, yeah. Do any of these handle dialects like there's Portuguese and there's Brazilian Portuguese? Yeah. Uh, you, you have to consider the, each of these uh, language. That's the, the way it's going to be Same handled. Like yeah. A separate translation. And I think we had one question in that area before, no? So, so that's going to be like maybe the two or three last, like in the back, middle, and you in the front. Okay. How do you manage the design of the frame with the plugins? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say you can choose a frame for each side for the plugins. How do you change the format to write on all the frames? I I never add to do that. Uh, thank God. Um, like I I I think you would have like to build another. Template, page template for, uh, but there is a few good things that you can switch. Yeah. But I, I cannot think of any uh, theme that does it out of the box. Well, WordPress itself is right to left compatible. So uh, if you if you use WordPress in version, you will, the, the the sidebar will be on the other side completely, and but, you'll. But not the menus, I think. But uh, not depending on the, the menus will follow, but you need to have some uh, some. Uh, additional uh, CSS that will take care of reversing uh, reversing stuff for uh, right level. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
some teams, uh, some teams already have that built in. If you're browsing on <laughs> WordPress.org, uh, there's a there's a tag for that, which is uh, RTL uh, ready or something like that, which uh, which identifies a team that have that thing. So I don't think you can solve that just no. with a plugin, no. In, in the middle, yeah. Uh, I can speak, I don't know much Spanish, I can speak for what I know, French. Um, there, there is difference between French from France and France for Quebec, so that really, really depends on what you're doing as, as a website. Um, some companies like, like H&M, uh, the clothing company, have different translation for Quebec and for France. So, um, if you're a newspaper, no, you just... Yeah, sure. But uh, if you want to really localize your content, that might be a good idea. And yeah, uh, IKEA does it too. There's different translation in France and in Quebec. So probably the same for Spanish. Uh, maybe one last question. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's you. Um, just a comment on that. Just know your client, right? Who you're selling yeah. to. Yeah. And but you need to know your target yeah, audience yeah. and you prioritize yeah. this audience, obviously. So, because otherwise, uh, you can never stop spending money <laughs> on translation. <laughs> Um, okay, so being, you know, USA-centric, being one of those folks that only knows one language, apparently. Um, and I'm hiring someone to translate for me, right, for two or three different languages, so I don't speak those languages. Yep. Yeah. So how do I know that I've gotten a really good translation? Because, I mean, I have people who say they speak English, and they'll transpose some video for me, and it comes back, and it's a nightmare, it's a mess. So someone's going to translate and give me French or Arabic or, you know, uh, Hebrew. How do I know it's good, or they just run it through some... Translation there is no plugin for that. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, I, I have a friend who's also a client that manages an agency that translates in different languages, and she has found a university teacher in different languages that test our translators. So maybe having your translator translating a few paragraphs and having like review it by somebody that you know that is a real professional or somebody who's a, who has born that language, but um, having your translation tested. Yeah, right. well, when you use a human to do the translation, then you need someone else to make to the translation. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But do you have an agency that you know of that you can maybe tweet out or something that, that might be something, something along those lines? Or? <laughs> well, I, I, the, the, I, I'm, I don't have any name that I would like recommend and put okay. my name on it and say, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. but for, for French, I mean, email me and I will help you. But. Uh, but like even like a, I'm a professional writer and my, my French writing is being reviewed by two people, two different persons before it's published. So I think it's the same for translation or anything. Uh, but you're right that it's hard to find uh, an editor in another language than yours and to have trust in that editor. Right. Yeah, it's, you need to... Because I, I talk to friends sometimes like Italian and they'll say, oh, there's no real way to say that in English. You know, yeah. it's like, it's really, it's, how do you translate something like that? But being a translator is not, it's, it's not just being bilingual. It's, it's a real job. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and there's no plugin for that. No. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Great. Thank you.